Hello, welcome to another episode of Montana Shares, your opportunity to find out about the nonprofits that make our state so great. I'm your host, Bill Crane, and today I have um, Mary from the Montana Community Foundation. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. So I'm kind of, we'll just be honest, this is a last minute fill, but I think it was the perfect thing because we get to talk about our whole entire community, Montana, and kind of end of year giving. So let's start with Montana Community Foundation. What do you do? Well, we focus on Montana. All of the charitable giving work that we do is primarily um, focused here in our great state. And so we are an organization that is the agent of the philanthropist. We aren't out there raising funds for the benefit of the organization, our own organization that delivers programming. We're out there um, as a place for people who care about their community, however mm -hmm. they define that, to give to their community. Um, to whatever fund, what have you, for the benefit of Montana. So we've been around almost 30 years. Next year is our 30th anniversary, and we are teetering at the $100 million mark. And almost all of our funds are permanently endowed, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. So we are here to be a place for creating funds for Montana forever, largely. is, is, is I like to say we're the agent of the philanthropist in service to Montana. Right, so $100 million, that's a good start on being sort of a forever and really making a difference in our state. It is, and, and folks, you know, I, I, hardly, I hardly say the number because it's always a shocker and people just believe, oh, you have $100 million completely unrestricted, well, let me tell you about our organization <laughs> and we can, you know, we can help you with a, a place to make some grants uh, right. to, but that's not how it operates, you know. Um, nearly all of the funds that we have are restricted by purpose, mm -hmm. either um, a family has set up a fund with us instead of creating a private foundation, so we have donor advised funds, as well as having um, endowed funds and non-permanent funds that benefit specifically named charities as well. Mm -hmm. And if you had a guess, would you say those specifically named charities, is that maybe half of it, or is there a percentage that you throw a guess You know, I was just looking at some of, some of those data points, and I would say well over a third, probably a third to a half, are for specifically named organizations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So before we dive into kind of where we're at in the year. Sure. You were, we were chatting just a little bit ago about the wildfire fund and sort of that whole process and how it really defined community and support. So let's chat a little bit about sure. that. Sure. So we all know that Montana had a terrible fire season this mm -hmm. year. And like er, many Americans, folks in Montana were looking for a place that they could donate, that they knew their money would stay in Montana and would benefit Montana. And so we had folks calling us saying, hey, I, I'm interested, Are you guys, do you have a fund? What does that look like? And so we actually did set up a fund and I actually made the very first gift to it because I wanted to get the fund moving. And it's not an endowed fund. It's a, it's a fund where every dollar that comes in is absolutely gonna go out the door. We're not taking any administrative fees on that fund at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we're teetering close to the $600,000 number in terms mm -hmm. of donations that have been made for that fund. And it, it really, um, all the credit goes, frankly, to the Montana Television Network who was instrumental in getting the word out about mm -hmm. the fund. You know, they did all kinds of programming and specials and what have you, and people learned about that fund and then gifts just really started coming in and we're still receiving gifts today. Um, but today, we're also in the process of granting from that fund and we're doing two grant cycles from that fund. Um, the, first, the first grant cycle uh, rounds have closed and we're making decisions on those funds. And the first grant cycle was restricted to volunteer fire departments um, mm -hmm. who responded to the wildfires. The second grant cycle expands it beyond the volunteer fire departments to other nonprofit organizations that served communities during the wildfire season. So um, we don't know exactly all of the grants that are going to be made, but in, in total so far, um, we have over $800,000 in qualified requests for grant money. Mm -hmm. So. You, you know, you can do the math, we're about right. $200,000 short, but we're still $600,000 far ahead of where we ever thought we'd be relative to helping the Montana communities that suffered through these fires. Right, so let's see if we can talk data points again. That's sort of all the money going out. How did it come in? Was there an average gift? What were your extremes? Oh, you know, anything? Bill, you, you can't ask me those details. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm dying. Um, uh, I can tell you, I cannot tell you off the top of my head this, the average gift amount yeah. or things like that. Clearly, I should have done a little more homework. Well, but, we um, didn't have time for that. Right? <laughs> we'll have that data when, when we kind of get through this. Um, 
But we, re we received several large gifts, you know, the Montana Television Network's cash gift was, was I think, I believe $50,000, the mm -hmm. Arthur Blank Foundation. Um, you know, he's a part-time Montanan who has right. a guest ranch here. He was very generous as well. Um, other gifts that were kind of notable and surprising, there was a fellow in Great Falls that just went into the local television station and had a $50,000 check. And I you know, those of us in, in this business, <laughs> that doesn't just happen. You know, right, people don't just right. bring in $50,000 checks. But we also had gifts from people um, early in the process from Houston. And if you remember, mm -hmm. Houston had just the, gone through right. their huge natural disaster. And so um, little school groups, you know, in Idaho and across Montana as well, um, mm -hmm. that did fundraising events and all kinds of things to um, help the wildfire fund or contribute to the wildfire fund. So gifts probably ranged anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000. And there have been a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and amazing. So it really shows the support that you can get support from out of the state of Montana. So our community isn't defined by boundaries. It's, it's much bigger than that. I think our community is defined by however we as individuals define community. And mm -hmm. you know, I think the one thing that makes Americans probably um, more special than anyone else on the planet, I'd like to think, is just our, cu our in in incredible generous nature. Mm -hmm. You know, by nature, Americans are very generous. And you see that here in these Western states and definitely in Montana. The, the thing that I love about Montana though is um, unlike some places, people don't necessarily want a grandstand and they don't want people to know when they've made big gifts and, mm -hmm. or even little gifts, you know, but they, they just want to kind of fly under the radar and be anonymous. And, you know, some people make their gifts anonymously. Some people make gifts and say, please don't share this information. Um, and some folks have even set up anonymous funds with us. So when we make grants from those funds, nobody knows where those came, where those you know, funds came from. Mm -hmm. So as much as we want to make sure we acknowledge and thank every single person who, who gave to any of our funds, um, we're also really careful about kind of the, non, the anonymous giver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is the end of the year. It's end of year giving time. So let's talk about kind of some of the advantages of giving and the tax credits and just, we don't have to get into detail sure. other than call you for details, yeah, but sure. let's talk generally about that. So we all know that right now um, our, our Congress is really debating on what's going to happen with our um, tax deductibility of a variety, or tax, taxes just in general. And mm -hmm. charitable giving will definitely be part of that conversation and is part of that conversation. So right now um, in America, there are certain benefits, tax benefits to making a gift. We don't know what that's gonna look like though um, until Congress and the president finish this tax reform process. So mm -hmm. I would encourage people who are being really um, mindful about tax implications of giving um, and know in what they want to do, that they do it this year because we're not sure what's going to happen, frankly, mm -hmm. beyond this year. Uh, also, Montana has some really amazing uh, tax benefits for giving as well, whether those are companies that want to make donations or individuals if you pay any tax in the state of Montana. There's some great incentives. Finally, I would say um, the type of gift you make makes a big difference as well if you're concerned about taxes. So if, mm -hmm. you, if you're going to write it, most, the most expensive gift you can give is a check, writing a check. Um, but if you have appreciated stock, for example, um, there's really some great benefits of making, using that kind of a, a, a vehicle as a, as a gift. Mm -hmm. But I don't wanna get into tons of details because it can be super um, confusing and overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, but if people have questions, uh, always of course talk to your tax advisors and professionals, but we'd be happy to help you as well if you have some ideas or questions or thoughts. Right, you've got plenty of staff that are up to speed on all I of that. I think we do. In a couple of cities even to boot. <laughs> yeah, we have um, our main office is here in Helena and we have an office in Missoula and they have one staff person up in um, Big Fork, okay. up in the Flathead area. So our team is here and happy to help you wherever you are mm -hmm. in the state. And, and again, without going too deep in the weeds, but I think one example I've seen is depending on your tax bracket, you can donate $10,000 to an organization and after your tax credits, it only comes out to three or $4,000 in true cost. Is that, Yeah, you know, it's, it's a huge benefit. It is, and so if you're a company, 
there's a certain threshold that you can make a uh, that you can take a Montana endowment tax credit. And so these kinds of gifts, these, these state incentives are for permanent giving. So if you're making a gift to a fund that's gonna be here forever, mm -hmm. a qualified endowment, which all of our endowments are qualified endowments, um, and we're licensed with the secretary uh, or with the insurance commission to issue planned gifts, you can actually take not only a federal tax deduction, but a state tax credit if you structure your gift in a certain way. And I have to say, I'm a little embarrassed because this I've not done this before. I've, my husband and I have lived here in Montana now for four years, and this year we're making our first planned gift, and um, because he's a lot older than I am, wink, wink, <laughs> six years, um, there's advantages to us to make a gift like this. And mm -hmm. so doing the math, um, a, a $5,000 gift to an existing endowment, which is what we're gonna do, actually costs us less than uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars once we take the federal tax deduction and the state tax credit and so why yeah, wouldn't you do that that's the amazing part especially since most of us or many of us are already making charitable gifts mm -hmm. in, in our state and this is a way to take the gift giving that we're currently doing and making sure that the organizations that we care about are supported forever long after we're gone by making a mm -hmm. gift to an endowment so we can help you with that if, if folks have questions or are interested yeah, so individual, business, anyone can really benefit, and yep. you can benefit a lot if you really take a little bit of time, talk to your accountant, talk to you guys about sure. how to maximize that uh, benefit to the community. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about those types of gifts is um, right now the organizations that I write checks to really appreciate those $100 checks or whatever I'm giving, mm -hmm. but a, a gift to one of those organizations' endowments means that that organization's gonna benefit long after I am no longer on this earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or maybe I decide down the road, gosh, I'm ready to support a different organization. Um, they can rely on that, the income from that gift I make today forever. Mm -hmm. So is, I mean, like I said, this spur of the moment stuff, anything else you wanna add to this? Anything else we should be talking about? You know, I think um, everyone has, has expressed, Montana is just one small town with really long streets and a few stoplights, <laughs> right? And, you know, I've come to find that to be true. And I also have found that when people um, observe someone else in need or a way to, to jump in and help, they respond to that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I think that the act of generosity is so amazing and so lovely. And we know that we believe everyone can be a philanthropist. And we also believe that all of us doing something, no matter what size of something that is, makes so much greater difference than any one single person doing something grand. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage people to remember this holiday season that, um, it takes all of us to build the kind of community that we love and care about. And it's a contact sport, you know, you can't just sit on the sidelines um, getting involved, whether that's serving on a board, whether that's volunteering, and hopefully that also includes making a gift to that organization that you love and care about, not just at the end of the year, but thinking about how you regularly support them. Those are important things to remember. Right. Man, I think that's the perfect wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Don't you think? Yeah, serve and donate and just help the groups and build the communities that you want to build. Yeah. That's perfect. Think about what's important. Yeah, perfect. Well, let's wrap up. Thank sure. you so much for coming on the show. And I want to thank everyone that tuned in. This will be the last show of the year. So happy holidays. And I hope they're great for you.